Thank you very much, Professor Kessel, for taking the time. And I'm Joseph. Okay, Joseph, for, <laughs> thank you for joining me here at the HRM Expo 2015 in September in Cologne. Um, you have just completed your keynote presentation on uh, the new distribution of leadership. It was very interesting. Yeah. How do you find it? How did you find the expo so far? How well, was your it's experience? A, it's a great experience that you have the combination of professionals who uh, present their ideas, their services, and at the same time a rich program for, of thought leaders who, um, yeah. who contribute with innovative ideas. And this morning I had a chance to uh, listen to the um, uh, speech of the Staatssekretärin. Yes. Um, and um, it's also important that the, that the government really takes steps to, um, to, to innovate our way of thinking about organizing work. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's a great place. I met many international guests as well. Um, and I heard the beautiful experiences from leading um, German companies. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I, I also find that there's a really great buzz here and it's very converging. We're all yeah. converging to this Arbeiten 4.0, the new yeah. way of working, of which you are also part and, and coming more from the organizational, the leadership point yeah. of view. At the same it's a nice melting pot. You see on the one hand there are people and uh, professionals who strongly focus on systems and on support systems and there are also colleagues who strongly focus on the, a new culture of work and learning and development and, uh, um, and that's, that's something very interesting. And of course it's big, you know, it's very big. So there are many opportunities for meeting people and for exchanging experiences. Now, um, I, what we always advocate, we talk about, you know, some of these core values have to be in um, the DNA of the companies, in the yeah. employers. So the offering uh, an environment where employees can continuously learn, continuously update their skills, when they can find new impulses. And I found it very fascinating in your presentation when, when one person from the audience asked you and, and you answered that in the knowledge economy, um, everybody has to do extraordinary things. And also you said, what also really struck me, you said that in the digital world of work, those who cannot keep up will be the new disabled, which will be an, an additional challenge for HR. Yeah, very often when we talk about a new culture of work, um, um, and especially when I am addressing topics like distributed leadership, um, at first hearing, it sounds like a romantic, um, fuzzy a rose. You're sitting on a rose wall um, cloud, huh? and um, <clears throat> of course, I have a very strong humanistic inclination. That's one of my drivers. But my uh, academic work is very much focused on an economic aspect. Mm. If we really do not manage to transform the workplace into an attractive place for learning and innovation, we just lose out. Yes. So just forget it. Huh? Yes. So there's a very strong economic reason for, uh, for, uh, for addressing these topics. So that's why I try to be on the one hand to, um, to take these um, more high level virtues as a given and on the other hand uh, try to combine it with the day-to-day -day business practices. I have run my business for 40 years, so I know exactly what it means to, um, to offer a, a profitable work environment for 80 professionals. So. But I think we're still so ingrained in these stereotypical norms of leadership, of organizations, of power structures, and I, th I actually think that you mentioned something that I haven't heard from others mentioned here because you talked about the power relationship between boss and employees, owners and workers and also about salary and job insecurity that you know we have to pay our mortgage so yeah. 
can I really jump around and be disruptive and, and challenge the status quo? And I think that was so important that you mentioned that because I haven't heard that from other speakers. Especially when it comes down to salary and payment, there the power imbalance is very strong. And as we don't like to discuss it, or mm. we found it, find it in easy, uneasy, then we heavily rely on formal systems. Yes. Um, for instance, um, I am also employed at the university, and when I see my overview, my financial overview at the end of the month, it's hardly, it's so difficult to understand. Huh? And it f gives you the feeling of being very stupid. Yes. Um, and I see no relationship between this sheet of figures and the work I've been doing during the last month. Absolutely. And that's an, I think it's an unhealthy idea. Absolutely. And yeah, we're at the mercy of, you know, a little yeah. bit. Our boat is rocked on yeah. these seas and yeah. we can't control. Yeah. And um, I think it would be a great idea that, that, uh, that we we install a direct balance and feeling between the work that I do, the responsibilities that I feel, the successes that I book, and on the one hand, um, what does it mean in terms of salary, but also in terms of uh, um, uh, quality of cooperation, uh, opportunities for further development, uh, equipment of my workplace. Um, can I choose how my workplace looks like uh, yes. to make it? An, Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, and you also started your presentation by saying that uh, employees have two feet. They can walk in and they can walk out. And I guess that's it, right? If, if, if they would not start a conversation to renegotiate the conditions, they would say, well, I would then look for another job and just yeah. leave, hoping that it will be different yeah. elsewhere. I find it interesting working with young professionals. Um, on the one hand, they accept the world of uh, hierarchy and so on, but they are not impressed by it. Mm. If it just doesn't work for their talent, just they go off. Mm. They don't argue, they don't make big fuss about it, no conflict. Uh, my talent is important, I need to nurture it, and I will find a position or place where it is better at its place. Mm. Uh, and um, I think my generation finds it very difficult to cope with that because it's not a conflict uh, there's no problem so it's okay no it's not okay you're just not attractive yeah and 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 thus we see the growing number of startups a new generation of startup founders who already build their companies on these principles of a holacracy, a democratic decision yeah. making, everybody trans total transparency, very fluid, yeah. very flexible, right? It's, it's the example of the startups. Um, I even see it with my students. I have a class of 50 master students, and I think that about 25 have their own company. Yes. And in their own company, they are entrepreneurial, they are innovative, and so on. And as soon as they come into the university, sit in the lecture hall, they have to sit there and listen. It's not their world. Yeah. And we just don't understand it. Yes. And of course, they obey because they, have, they need to, to get their credits and their points. But we, there is so much more there, and we don't use it. Mm. Yeah. I find it a very exciting time to yeah. Meet. yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining me here and I wish you the best of success for your thank future you, work. Thank you.